she saved my life because I realized I'll never allow that again in my life from now, now on. I will never, ever allow anybody I don't respect to critique me. Actually, I, I had a question for you because I've been thinking about this a lot. I, you know, I didn't really achieve the level of success in my acting career that I would have preferred. But of course, now I'm in a new career and it's really strange to me to go through this process of it made me think about what it must be like for actors when they go from not really working at all into booking work and not just booking work, but becoming, uh, I don't know, a hot commodity or something like that. It's a very uh, weird process to go from like, you can't get a meeting, you can't get, you know, you, you nobody wants to talk to you to all of a sudden sort of being like, in high demand. And that's a really strange shift in terms of your mentality. And uh, I, I'd never really experienced before. Of course, now I'm experiencing it in a, in a different way. But I, I wonder if you have any thoughts on that, because I've been thinking about it a lot. I had a, a young woman who I was coaching, and I, I asked her a question about an audition that she had. And I said, have you ever really had a friendship ending fight? And she said, I have. It was because a, a friend of mine who I'd been friends with for 10 years booked a series, and he became a different person. He became like a completely different human being. And the way that he talked to me was different, and he wouldn't um, respond in the way that he had before, he really changed into a new human being. And I didn't know how to deal with it. And so we, we stopped being friends. It's a, such an interesting part of life and a career that I don't think people talk about, which is like, how do you deal with success? I don't think it has to do with acting. It has to do with everything in life. Same thing in, in any type of career. Career it doesn't mm -hmm. make a difference. Uh, I think there is an old saying that you become who you really are when you have a, a great success. Then the real you comes out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, for better or for worse. Yeah, whatever. Or, it, or I've heard also that it, it amplifies your natural inclinations. I think the, the real question is to get that great success so then you can experience it and find out what kind of fucking bitch you are. <laughs> you know? And if you're that fucking <laughs> terrible <laughs> bastard... And but you, until you have the success, why worry? Mm. You know, I mean, yeah, no, no, who I know. Who cares? Yeah, just get that fucking success and and then find out who you really are. You know, because anyway, all life is a search to finding out who you really are. Anyway, mm. you know, some people with great success they become even better. Mm -hmm. Some don't. Some do. Life is really weird. Look at me. What a mess. <laughs> yeah, you think you're a mess? Really? Yeah. No, I'm not a mess. No, I'm really not a mess. Uh, but I, I don't see why, what, why, do you, why do you care? There's so few people, few people who become successful. Mm, yeah, what, in One out field. of a thousand? Yes, I agree. I agree. Actually, I think what I'm interested in is just the idea uh, that you were talking about, which is it cuts across all careers, which is... I think what you're really interested in is why do you feel like you're such a fucking failure? <laughs> Even though you're not a failure, but like, uh, does everyone feel like this? You know, when they pivot from one career to another career, it's like, I'm such a failure. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. Everyone feels like they're a failure when yeah, they... Yeah, how can you feel like a failure that when is, you're successful? That is no... But feeling like a failure is really common. Yeah. Becoming this crazy, successful person, and generally they feel like they're a failure in the beginning too. Generally they feel, well, I don't really deserve this. Right. What do you mean? I don't deserve $5 million for a movie that doesn't make... I, I'm the same person who was unemployed two years ago. 
yeah. begging for an agent. And I guess that's the point is like, if you're not, if you don't feel on some level like you're doing something different, then what changed that led to the success in the first place? That I think is the more interesting question mm -hmm. than uh, a friend losing a friend because of great success or great success isn't as common. Yeah. I mean, and, and the, the thing that you really have to define is what is success? Mm -hmm. And no one wants to define that. It, it, we live in a very capitalistic society and success is defined really by how much money you have. Yeah. You know? And how many people know your name? That's a, a new thing because of social media. Yeah, but it's it's essentially the same thing. It's a cultural capital versus, you know, actual financial capital. Right. But it's the same idea. Right. And then if you're really successful, you know, you know. I mean, that's not true. It's yeah. a lie. You know something for sure. Henry Ford figured out whether someone figured it out for him or he did it with a committee or he did it by himself, how to create a new, uh, a more efficient system system of building cars. Cars. Right, the assembly line. Right. That was a pretty amazing thing. A lot of people could buy cars and he became Yeah, because it lowered the price of cars yeah. so dramatically that it became something that it wasn't just a luxury item and, and a he became class insanely, person could yeah. afford it. He became insanely wealthy. Mm -hmm. Did that... Make him a better person? Wow. Do you, no, really. Uh, yeah. Did it make him happier? Was he was he a miserable person first? And then, wow, he got, you know, he became one of the richest men in the world. And so he was just happy. He just ran around giving people money, bums in the street, homeless people, houseless people. He'd give them a, throw them a 20. I, by the way, I'm making all this shit up. <laughs> he was a miserable human being, a cheapskate. I mean, he had a horrible rev reputation, no. an anti-Semite. I was going to say he was very anti-Semitic. I think he He, he, he thought was Hitler was great. Hitler's. He That's was a right. huge fan. So what? what is this big, huge success guy, you know? And there are other rich people who are turn out to even be better people. How do you define success, you know? So here you are. First of all, to, to, to even look at your life in that manner is unhealthy. You have to look at your manner now. You look, at the, look at your life now, especially in the artistic fields. Mm -hmm. The artistic fields are not the best fields for making money. In terms of no, the odds, not. <laughs> no. painters. Yes, a house painter makes more money than an artist. You yeah. know, say, you know, wait, hey, you know, what do you do? I'm an actor. What do you do? I'm a, I'm a director. What do you do? I'm a musician. What do you do? I'm a painter. Oh my God, you're a painter. What have you have I seen your exhibit? Yes, uh, Joe Schmidt's house down the road over there. <laughs> I painted his house, and it's take a look at it. It's really yeah. nice, and I did kind of the. The, the <laughs> it's the, on Slauson and 73rd. Yeah, the woodwork on the outside, it's two tones, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> I work every day. I was particularly proud of the cornices. The cornices, <laughs> right. I make a lot of money. <laughs> How I much know. money do you make? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I'm unemployed. I collect unemployment for the last two years, you know. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I'm making a joke out of a very complicated issue, which is... Uh, everyone should have respect for the thing that they do. Other people may not respect it. That's fine. That's their problem. And if you don't have respect for what you do, then you shouldn't do it. If you can, if it's at all possible. So let's use that house painter idea. Mm -hmm. There are people who really like to paint a house. Yeah. That you can see it. They have a truck. I've mm -hmm. seen it. Oh, I know. And yeah. their truck is beautiful. It said, John Smith and Son's house painting. <laughs> you know, and it's yes. this is clean. Immaculate. Truck. Yeah. And it's like the, the logo's lovely. And, and the reason I know, because when we were going to paint our house, mm -hmm. you, I went over to, I saw this truck and I said, this guy must be really 
Good. Good. Yeah. So I knocked on the door because he was doing- Of his car or the no, house? on the house because he was- Oh, he was inside. Inside at that yeah. time, you know? Because he does in inside house and outside house, you know? Yeah, interior and exterior. And he was there. The door wasn't even locked. And yeah. he came to, to the door because uh, the owners weren't there. And I said, hi, uh, I'm your neighbor from a couple of blocks down. And I'm looking for a house painter, you know? And he said, oh, well, that's what I do. And, and he was like, Really handsome and he, <laughs> put he, together. <laughs> Sixty years old, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you could see I had a great sense of humor, and and uh, I told him what I was doing that I'm a renter, and you know, and yeah. he said you're a renter. Oh, I I really don't paint rentals. He said I paint houses for people who own their house. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, why is that? He said because I charge a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> because renters don't want to pay that, no. and the owners don't want to pay that. They're not He's, going to pay that. Right. Clarity, the <laughs> the the landlords are not going to pay that. That's right. And he said, "But I do a great job, and you're going to really be happy when I'm done, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be happy too." <laughs> we both <laughs> laughed. I said, "You're right. I know you're not the right person for yeah. me." You know. He said, but I have some names I can give you, you know, yeah. but uh, that are less expensive, you know. But he was really happy. Yeah. I so mean, it seems like he had a lot of pride in the work that he did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And he does specialty jobs, you know, where mm -hmm. they're difficult kind of things like the studio where, that we have. Oh, we yeah. have this beautiful, if anyone ever gets over to our studio, you'll see we have, we have this really unique yeah. paint job inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, it was designed by a designer, and yeah. it looks beautiful, and she... I know, Bethany Holt. Yes. She put the whole thing together. Trust me, I would not have been like, yes, let's do this asymmetrical design with hand-painted uh, squiggles on the wall. I mean, she really was like, no, we're going to do this. And the bathroom has this she had a artistic mm -hmm. uh, mural. mural. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing what she did. Yeah. So the point, I don't want to lose the point, which is, if you even are a painter, uh, you can really like it and enjoy it every day. Yeah. And I'm sure he wasn't making a lot of money when he started. I am sure he just painted a fucking house <laughs> <laughs> for as little money as they could give him. Yeah. And as he continued doing it, Word got around. People started saying, you know, he's really clean. He doesn't mess up your furniture. And, yeah. <laughs> and he clean but I think that's the key. Isn't that what, what you said was as he went and word got out, he probably raised his rates and said, For sure. I'm not available or there is a wait list or. Demand. Yes. Got right. Great. Because if he's that good, there's going to be desire for that kind of a person. That's how I raise my rates. Mm -hmm. I only raised my rates as the demand got uh, greater. Yeah. So I said, oh, the demand is, so I better get an extra teacher or two extra teachers. They can charge less than I do. I could charge a little more. And it continued to be full. Mm -hmm. And then I had to make a decision. How successful do I want to try to get? Mm. Yeah, how big do you want to grow and how how much work do you want to have? How much management do you want to have to do? Well, started, I started going on set mm -hmm. and it's very lucrative to go on set. And yeah. it's certainly the highest level of artistic work because yeah, you're, you're actually participating in, in a multi-million dollar movie where you are in the creative process. Yes. And it's and going to be seen by people. You are collaborating in the creative process with everyone. Mm -hmm. And they're all collaborating because yeah. the movies are a collaborative process. Mm -hmm. And here I am collaborating and the... Yeah, you're collaborating with Michael Mann and yes. F. Gary Gray and yes. Peter Berg. Like the, those are, you know, and plus the, the greatest actors in the world. And they're asking me to. Yeah. And they're giving me money to. Mm -hmm. I never in my wildest dreams, I never... My goal was to be an actor. So now I'm collaborating with these people that I would, would <laughs> they're my favorite. I wanted to be with them and work with them. And I am working with them, not in the manner that I thought I was mm -hmm. going to work with them. And they're paying me. 
and they want me there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then you have another problem, which is set work takes you absolutely away from your studio. Right. Not just my studio. How about my family oh, and my friends? So the only friends you can now have is on set because you go from one project to another project. So you could work nine months easily of the year on set, on location, unless you're working on a television show in town. Right. Because if you're working on a television show in Vancouver, you're you're now living in Vancouver. Yeah, you're living in Vancouver. Well, yeah. we did it. We worked on Emancipation. Emancipation, the two of us. Yes, and we spent seven months in New Orleans. Well, <laughs> so, punctuated by a brief evacuation yes. for Hurricane Ida. <laughs> one, uh, one month evacuation, right. But we became a native natives of New Orleans. Absolutely. Friends, neighbors, dinners, the restaurant owners recognized us and talked to us. Mm -hmm. We had a new life. Yes. And if we didn't invite our friends down to live, come down and visit us, we would have lost them. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens if you have a family and children? Your children can't just move. They can, but that's very disruptive. Yeah. And how long are you going to be there? Right. If you're on a series, if that series runs for eight years, then that's a different conversation. But if you're doing a pilot or even the first season of something, you don't know if it's going to last. No. And what if your wife has a job or your husband has a job? Mm -hmm. how, how do you work all this out? Uh, the way you work it out is called divorce. <laughs> yeah. That's how you work it out. <laughs> Affairs, divorce, no. <laughs> open marriages, open relationships. I know. No, you... Who's going to do seven years without your... These are the real questions that you have to look at as life starts to happen of your day-to-day -day life. Like, I'm really living down here. I'm really living in Atlanta now. Mm -hmm. There's a series here, five years. Uh, um, what's her name did a series down there? Uh, Nafisa. Yeah, Didn't she Black do Lightning. Black, she Black Lightning. Black Lightning. Right. So she, Nafisa was a client of mine did Black Lightning. She was there, I believe, five, four years, five years. Yeah, she just uh, booked another series, by the way. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, no. uh, Disney. Uh, it's a, it's set in England. It's um, called Rivals. Oh, that's wonderful. I didn't know at all. Yeah. So she wound up buying a condo down there to live. Mm -hmm. And of course, that makes tremendous sense at, at some ridiculously small price compared to Los LA. Angeles oh and my New York. Gosh, right. yeah. She has a beautiful condo down there. And and if she goes to another city, she might buy another one there. Mm -hmm. Gerard Butler, he, he bought a house in LA, a house in New York, a house in England, and a house in Scott because he lives there all the time. Yeah. So this way he wouldn't have to stay in a hotel. He could stay in the house that he lives in. Oh, wouldn't you always rather stay in a house than a, in a hotel? Right, but it is a different lifestyle mm -hmm. than most people understand. So if you don't love that, which I didn't love being on the set nine months of the year. Right. In other words, you liked a taste of it. You would go for, you know, over the course of a year. Three to four months. That's a lot, though. Yeah. I understand. That's that, that's a lot. Yeah. It affected my life totally. It affected my studio. It it, it affected everything because then I wasn't there for my students and my clients and the people who wanted me for auditions. Yeah. They, I wasn't there. You can't be. And now if you're not there, then, well, then I'll go find another coach, teacher, you know. Yeah. Uh, these are, but you have to look at what do I want in my life? And so that becomes a day-to-day -day thing instead of 10 years from now. And a lot of people like to do that. Where do I want to be? You know? Well, <laughs> I've never, ever in my entire life. I love when people say this, like in 10, my 10 year plan. And I'm like, whoa, motherfuckers. You're like, really? I've never in my entire life. I just can't think that far into the future because the things that I think about are so, I just don't have that capability. And when I do, it's laughable. Meaning like I look back two years later about the, the 10 year plan. I'm like, Oh, that was not in any way, uh, an accurate reflection of what was, um, 
in the cards or I, I, I think I actually avoid doing a 10 year plan because I don't, I actually don't understand how people do it. That's honest. I don't know if there's something wrong with me or, or whatever, but I, I, I really struggle to look that far down the road. As a tool, mm -hmm. a 10 year plan as a tool can be an effective five year plan, three year plan as a tool to figure out where you are now. And that's the only purpose of that tool. Oh no, you're going to fuck me up. <laughs> well, I'm hoping I'm going to fuck everyone up. The only say more, say more. The only important thing is to figure out where you are now. So if you hate where you are now, then a 10 year plan can help you understand well, you say in 10 years, I'd like to have a million dollars in the bank and I'd like to uh, you know, own my own business and have 20 people working for me and have a wife and three children or a husband and, you know. Well, that tool can help you understand, do you really want that now? Because really... Most likely that's what you're thinking you want now. And so like, if that's what you want now, why, wait a second, why are you so un unhappy right now? You can't have that right now anyway. It's impossible. What do you want now? No one really wants to look at what do you want now and now and now and now. So a 10 year plan is 10 years of nows, which we managed to count um, with a measurer called a clock. And a calendar. And a yes. clock and a calendar. Mm -hmm. But 10 years from now, guess what happens? You're at now again. Yeah. <laughs> You're always at now. Always. <laughs> so if you start with that tool saying, this is where I want to be, why do you really want to be there? How did you get that one? <laughs> How did that dream happen? Yeah. Like, well, what, what about now? What's your dream now? So here I am now Yeah. with the person I love. Mm -hmm. And I love Mark. That's Mark over there, <laughs> you know. Hello. You know. No, I love Mark. I know you do. I, I wouldn't do be here if I didn't love Mark. I know. I'm not going to sit in a fucking room and hate Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, you're right. That would be strange. Well, Mark is really, in, but he's a good producer, Aaron. He's, no, he's, he's the best. In fact, if you work with Mark, Mark, the podcast producer, almost guaranteed will get your podcast on the air because that's who Mark is. He's a scumbag. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't care. I don't want to be in this yeah, fucking room yeah, with Mark. Yeah, yeah. He makes me unhappy. I don't give a fuck. There's other fucking producers. There are, of course. And that's actually, not, no, Mark is not a scumbag. I no, want to no, make no. sure. Mark, write <laughs> it in the clarity. thing. Mark is not a scumbag. Aaron was not. No, make sure you write that. Yeah, I'm going to clip this too. Literally saying the opposite no, of what I'm saying. I'm going to clip this and put this out of my socials. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the rant what from I'm there. Mark is yes. a scumbag. Right. Uh, that, that's very Bronx, everyone's come. Uh, I love Mark. And I'm sitting in a room with people I love. And I love Mark's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I cock-blocked you right then. Yeah. You know, I... I I hope I hope you know you guys are a little more serious because if you're not, then uh, Mark is single. Everyone, so it's okay. <laughs> Which I is somewhere in this in this yes. space going yeah, like, what right. the fuck? Did he just? Did he just? You know. <laughs> or Mark saying he cock blocked me? She's saying, did he say we're together to everyone? <laughs> I've been trying to tell that to Mark. He won't listen to me. <laughs> Why is he not giving me a ring? <laughs> So funny. Patience, patience. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, but what you're saying so, is no. It's it's a hundred percent accurate. In other words, the, uh, pretty much every industry is generally ruled by like if we can choose to work with people that we actually like. Or this is what I'm trying to get to yes. now. Yeah, that of course we have to go through a lot of experiences with people we don't like, but the concept is if you're if you are aware mm -hmm. like if i'm aware if someone's sitting here you're here and i'm interviewing someone mm -hmm. that i don't even like mm. right and i may have to mm -hmm. 
Yeah, of course. Why not? Of course. I mean, there are reasons to do that. 100%. So I don't like them, you know? Yeah. But if I don't like them that much, I don't have to. I've created my life so that I don't have to. Mm. And yet I still am with people I don't like all the time. Sure. You, you learn how to be a, a professional. And that means sometimes working with people that you don't personally like, but you know how to be a professional. Right. But this idea of now is so important for actors because you, first of all, the job is about now. Mm -hmm. The job is about creating an a world in yourself, an illusion that you are living now in an imaginary world. world. Yeah. That you really believe you're living now, now in this imaginary world. Well, it's only one step further to realize, well, that's what life is. Yeah. That as much as possible, since life is so much pain, it does, maybe minimizing that pain is a great way of having now be better. So maybe taking a walk makes you feel better now. Maybe you need to take some more walks. Maybe you look at the people who are in the circle of life that you have. Usually we only have 100 at most, don't you think? Yeah, totally, yeah. 110 some people say i got a lot of friends you know your friends aren't the the 50,000 people you have on your social media that is not your friends mm -hmm. that is not the circle of your life the circle of your life is the physical contact of the physical human beings that are in your life mm -hmm. parents relatives shopkeepers an neighbors. Uber, neighbors an uber driver enters your life and you enter their life for a short period of time, you'll never see them again. Right. That's not the people. The people are the like you, the people you see all the time. Right. Your employer. Right. Your employee. Yes. Your family. Yes. Your friend or even the friend that you don't see that often, but you have in your life on a regular basis. Your neighbor will have more to do generally than the person who lives across the country that you see once a year. <laughs> That's so true. So you better yes. make peace with your yeah. neighbor. Mm -hmm. Find some space to live with your neighbor because mm -hmm. your neighbor will affect your life yeah. greater than the person on the other side of the country. That you see once a year. Yeah. I'm not saying that they're not important. No, I understand. What you're talking about is... The day-to-day -day lived experience is now. right. Right, really now. Yes, now, 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 now. I see. <laughs> because what we think is the future yeah. is the dream of now. The past is the memory of now. I know. Mark, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Complete yeah. sense, yeah. But it's always now. So when you take a photograph or a video, you're doing that of now. Mm -hmm. And then we look and say like, oh, my God, look at this. It was 10 years ago. No, it was now. So you're saying if... You make a 10-year plan. Like, what do you want to be in 10 years? Right. What do you want your life to look like in 10 years? What you're really saying is, why are you not doing that now? <laughs> yes. In other words, <laughs> maybe you can't have a million dollars in the bank or $10 million in the bank, but you can make your life better in if, the way that... If it, $10 million, yes, is so important, then, then what difference does it make how you make the $10 million? Right. But it does make a difference, but that's another lesson. Of course it makes a difference how you make the... But if that's really it, $10 million, <laughs> right, that's, gonna it, be it. that's it? I mean, I'm not so shallow, but, you know, there are people that are like, no, that is it. You know, I need to have that amount of money in order to feel successful. Marlon Wayne... Uh, not Marlon, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, the comedian uh, on... Jim Carrey? Jim Carrey. Yes, Jim, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey held up... He, he He said he had a dream of... It's a very famous thing of yeah. the time. Do you remember? He held up... Did you ever... It was a See, check for like ten million dollars, yes. and I think he got it for the mask or one of those yes, yes. movies. He got 
his first ten million dollar check as a movie star. Mm-hmm. I don't know Jim Carrey at all. I never uh, met him, but he did not, and he seems happier now at this moment than he ever did in his life. Yeah, and he never talks about that anymore. And when you yeah, hear he him, has talked, he has spoken about it and how it did not leave him. Yes, it left him empty. And he seemed so unhappy. He certainly gave great joy to his audiences mm-hmm. and made us laugh. And he was a brilliant artist. But personally, I would rather Jim have made himself as happy as he could and not be that great artist. You know, I'll take responsibility for myself. <laughs> and uh-huh. and to, to see someone suffer and then commit suicide because their now is so terrible and you can't now, not everyone, and I don't mean to in any way take away from people who are uh, ill, but the issue is even if you're ill, you begin a process now Mm -hmm. of taking some medicine. You know, if you have an infection, we have new medicine and we say, take this medicine now and in two weeks, it'll the infection will go away. Right. How do they know? They've tested it. I know. Oh, well, that's what's so difficult about any kind of, you know, uh, my sister just had surgery on this melanoma. Yes. She didn't feel sick. And they said, no, we have to cut that melanoma out because in two years, you'll be dead if you don't. If Which not that's, less. Right, absolutely. That's how serious melanoma yes. is. And she was like, I don't, I feel great. I'm fine, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so the idea of like, no, we must treat this because we understand, we must treat it now because we understand the now in two years <laughs> will be death. Right. So she's yes. got to go through suffering now, now. to right. avoid way, well, you know. It's a perfect analogy because if you have a bad friend, Mm-hmm. A bad or a bad, boyfriend. Or a bad financial situation. Yes. So many people are in such bad, fi- they're in such credit card debt. It's wild. 25% I know. of their paying. You oh, know. yeah. And they're like, well, it's only $10,000. <laughs> well, yeah, in $10,000, that credit card debt is going to compound into $20,000. You'll have to pay it for the rest of your life yeah. if you pay the minimum. Right. So you begin fixing it now. And if you begin fixing it now and you get help and you find friends and who can help you and guide you and get on that path now, yeah. now. Well, and I guess what I realize is what I'm doing now or the last two weeks when I'm, I'm attempting to do is try to start addressing these day-to-day issues that I'm having. You were very successful for a short while as an actress. Yes. You were extremely Couple successful <laughs> as a theater actress. Yes. You were extremely yes. successful. Then you tried to pivot into film and television where you had really success. You didn't become famous or, but still success is, is getting work and yeah. being great at it. And, and then it, it really had a similar trajectory as I had where it's just that the success just stopped. Yeah. Everything. I couldn't get an agent. I couldn't get a manager. So many of us in our business, suddenly we, we, we had that and, and then we get nothing, you know? And then I, I went into a deep depression and I said, this is terrible. This is troubling, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, how do I fix it? That's when I, I said, well, I don't know how to fix it. And I went and I got help. Yeah. Well, but even the, that yeah. period of time for me happened during COVID. Yes. So it was kind of crazy because it was like it was already happening and then COVID hit and I was like, okay, this is solid (laughs) because it really was like compounded, like nobody was working. But on top of that, I had the time to really go like, this isn't working. I can't do this. I have to rearrange my life. Oh, I was with you. Yeah. And I kept saying, uh, uh, this is what I did as an example. I stopped. I said, I'm so unhappy, I have to stop. Mm -hmm. I have to stop now, right now. I remember the exact moment I said, now, I may pick it up down the line, but I have to stop now. I had this moronic audition, the most moronic (laughs) 
audition one could ever have. And I was a really strong actor. Yes. And so I was desperate. I got this audition. And this was after you had done a, a role in a I limited series. in a mini series yeah. called The Last Convertible. I had done, I really worked a lot. I you know. know, you had some serious like 33 momentum. years old and I was, I thought, you know, and then everything, couldn't get an agent, lost my, I lost everything, you know, mm -hmm. was moving towards broke, you know, whoa, yeah, you know. <laughs> no kind of pain like broke. <laughs> moving everything moving and then I, I got this one audition they said it's day's work my agent i had this crazy fucked up agent mm -hmm. <laughs> was, yeah because it was all you could get that was all i could get at this time he sends me to this audition there are no lines it's the opening scene in a monster movie <laughs> yes right and <laughs> no lines no, no lines. lines so it's just behavior but it's a day's a day's work yeah. i could Use it was you know five hundred a thousand dollars a thousand dollars I could use it you know so I walk in and there's this eighteen year old assistant you know because an assistant you oh, know minimum no. wage no assistant. I know it's not it's not woman or man was it a woman or a man? girl yeah so it wasn't a it woman wasn't, it was a girl it was a girl <laughs> thank you yes it was she looked this, like she was thirteen it wasn't this girl's fault that Hold was on. her that was her Hold job. on yes. maybe maybe it was her fault how do you know. <laughs> You don't know what happened. <laughs> no, go ahead, please. Yeah, so, please continue the story. So, so the, the, the sides were, you know, I'm the lab assistant and I'm doing things, you know, with uh, test tubes. And, yes. and I don't see this, this uh, plant monster <laughs> <laughs> reach its tentacles. Its tentacles are coming at me and I don't see it. And then suddenly... It it in it no. wraps around me and wraps around my neck and strangles me to death. That's the scene. That's the whole scene. <laughs> I said I could do that. I mean, uh, sure. No, I mean, I've done Shakespeare for God's sake, Lennox and Macbeth, and I, I, I've been in front of tens of thousands of of live people and mm -hmm. co-starred in a mini series and and, I, <laughs> and physical work like that you were really good at oh i was great and i've worked with some of the greatest you know teachers and directors and, oh this is silly you know <laughs> <laughs> so how'd it go so it, it, it's the first page. It's one page, yeah, you know? right, yeah. So I, I said, okay, I'll I'll give him a couple of different... Takes. Takes, you yes, know? right. Oh, as yeah. I'm Smart. dying, you know? <laughs> so I do God. the first take, you know? Yeah. And, and the tentacles are going around, and I'm trying to pull the tentacles off, and then it gets around my neck, you know? Uh -huh. and, and, I, and I choke to death, and I fall to the floor. I know. And then I said, well, maybe I'll do another take, you, you know? Uh -huh. And she goes... This little girl goes, yeah. no, I, it wasn't good. She, <laughs> she said uh -huh. it wasn't good. She said, she said, you know, I just you, you should have done it faster, you know. I said, well, I could do it faster. I could do it in two seconds, you know. She said, no, that's okay. We're done. <laughs> oh no! First of all, I didn't want to do it. You I know, know what I mean? yeah, you went in. I know, I've done. Yes, and I right. really wanted to strangle her. No, I really <laughs> like wanted. Like the plant strangled yes. you. I wanted to kill <laughs> her. Real? Oh, I wanted to kill her. No, yeah. no, I wanted to go over and just grab her little neck, you know, <laughs> and smack her. You fucking bitch! I'll kill you. Tell me. <laughs> yes, I know. And instead, I just put my head down, and I said thank you, and I walked out. I was on Robertson Boulevard. Where the Ivy is, yeah. the Ivy restaurant's yeah, still yeah. there. Yeah. And I said, this is the worst feeling I've ever had. I wanted to kill that little girl. She was a sweet little girl. She I didn't know. do anything. She just said the stupidest shit. She couldn't know. You know? Ignorance. The definition of ignorance. She just got a part-time job for the minimum wage, and she's, she's critiquing me. And then I realized, but she saved my life. Because I realized I'll never allow that again in my life from now now on i will never ever allow anybody i don't respect to critique me yeah. and here i am sitting here right now 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 with the most beautiful woman in the world <laughs> 
one of the best producers in the world and quite handsome himself, if I won't, if I say so myself. <laughs> having a great time, my doing just cool things in my life. I know. Hanging out with, right now, with the best people in the world. Everyone is so envious of the people I hang out with, getting phone calls constantly from the great, greatest, most wonderful people to work and give me as much money as I want. Just tell me how much money, you know? That all came, I swear, from that moment when I said, I now, I will never allow that to happen again. If it was in any way in my power. Yeah. Well, I learned that that, that little girl saved me. Yeah, she taught you something. Yeah. Really? Un unwittingly. Wittingly? Unwittingly? Do you want to learn the lesson? Yeah. Who cares? Who cares how you learn the lesson? Did you learn the lesson? Are you open to the lesson? So if anyone listening to this, you know, as fast as you can. I know. Might... It, that's the hard thing, right? Is like, when do you wake up and say, the thing that is no longer serving me? And it could be anything. It could mm -hmm. be the, your boyfriend or your girlfriend. It could be uh, a relationship that you're having that isn't working. It could be a job that you have that it is It could be going to another country. You. I know. Yeah. Our friend Blake, a brilliant actor, mm -hmm. left the United States and is living in Mexico City, and he loves it. I know. He's doing so well. He loves it. He's acting in Mexico City. He's a, he's a working actor in Mexico City. I know. What a great thing for him to do. Yeah. So he made a decision now that it wasn't working. And it was because, you know, he broke up with a girlfriend and was depressed and all that, which we all... And that, that worked for him. So how does this relate to acting? It relates to acting because sometimes you have to pivot from acting. Yeah, it also teaches you the, you know, what what's the thing of um no paralysis through analysis. <laughs> That's right. No Isn't paralysis. that Quincy Jones? Quincy Jones said that. Yeah, he no paralysis through analysis. The, the day that Will Smith auditioned for the fr he had to audition for the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air for yes. the the uh, president, chief executive officer, and numerous other people. Yeah, he did. of NBC when he was doing the readings. Remember in Eman in Emancipation, I think we actually listened yes. to that that story. Yes, because he said he hadn't prepared. Right, and he wrote it in his book. He hadn't even looked. <laughs> I know. They haven't even looked at the. Th <laughs> right, they were like, "Here are the sides, ready." And he was like, "Let me come back." He let never. Me, he let never me seen a side. <laughs> <laughs> He'd never seen a side in his life. Right. He hadn't acted. And right. They gave him a half an hour. Right. And he came back and he booked it. Yeah. Of course, he was the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. He won he a Grammy. He was the character, right? He, he was. Yes. It was his character, mm -hmm. the Fresh Prince, and mm -hmm. and Quincy Jones started yelling to him. No paralysis through analysis. Right. No paralysis through analysis. <laughs> I know. Stop analyzing. Yeah. You have an opportunity right now. The fucking chief executive officer and president of of NBC are there. You are going to get your ass in front of them and do it. Yeah. And he started saying, no paralysis through analysis. No paralysis. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the, kind, the, kind of, the kind of bully we could all use more oh, of. Oh, we could right? use Quincy. See, everybody says like, oh, you know, we talk about these words and there's like, you know, these negative con connotations, for example, like manipulate or bully. But sometimes we bully people into oh, doing yeah. good things. There are good bullies yeah, and good, mani and, and good manipulators. Good manipulations. And we have a, a, a negative connotation because, of course, there are plenty of people that do it for negative yes. um, purposes. But wow, yes. there's some good bullies out there that will bully you into yeah. doing the thing that you actually need to do. Oh, I wish Quincy was bullying me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. You know. But sometimes Sometimes you bully me into doing things, but it's a good bully. And sometimes you bully me too. I do bully you. Thank I I'm thrilled. I know I'm I'm mean sometimes. I'm thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> Go to bed. Stop <laughs> eating cookies. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> At two o'clock in the morning. Why the fuck am I eating cookies? <laughs> the answer is because I'm depressed. I know, I know. Yes. And if you said if you go to sleep, you will be depressed. Yes, a good partner will bully you in the way that maybe you need to be bullied. That's right. And if you're 
if you don't like the way you're being bullied, you tell them. You, you communicate and work it out. Right. That's being bullied out of love. Good, a good bully. You know? <laughs> so uh, you, you fix it by beginning now. And what is the, you have to, that's why the, the idea of 10 years to make this full circle. What, no, I know. It's yeah. like, well, what do you want now? Because you have to take that first step now to get 10 years. Mm -hmm. But it's never going to be in 10 years what you think. So sometimes that gets you to make the first step. Right. So it's very functional then. It's, it's a very positive thing. Mm -hmm. And in acting, most people who try to become actors will not become professional actors. But that first step of trying to become a professional actor can lead you to the most wonderful thing. Yes, a career in doing something else. And and I think what's interesting about it is so often people don't even know the jobs that are available. Acting is the most visible part of the profession. And therefore, <laughs> it draws people in because of its visibility. Yes. I, I have a friend who's, uh, she just finished directing her first feature, Caroline. Mm -hmm. And she said to me one time, uh, I think I wanted to, because she was an actress first. That's how we met. We were both actors. And uh, she said, you know what I realized? Acting was all I saw. And so I never thought to myself, who's the person behind the camera? Because especially as a woman, it was like, well, that's, that's the, the role that I have to play because all you see are the women on screen and you don't ever think somebody made this happen. And so until she really got a taste of acting and said like, actually, maybe I don't even, I don't even know if I like this really. And so now she's moved into this new career and she's directing commercials. She just directed her first feature. It's, it's, it's given her the freedom to be actually the fullest version of herself. Well, I became coach, the name of this show. Mm -hmm. I became coach, I coach. Where that wasn't in my ten year plan. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, 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 that's the most ridiculous coach, mm -hmm. uh, teacher, and and as you pivot now, you may have bad days and depression, and but you're so much better yeah. than you were unemployed and lost. You're not unemployed anymore. You're not lost. We all have bad days, but you're finding things. Maybe you will not remain as a teacher and a coach. It's it's okay. How did Mark get... Mark is and was a brilliant actor. Brilliant. Now, here he is uh, in this business, Mastermind. Maybe he will go back to acting. Maybe he's still trying to act. I really don't know. And maybe yeah. he'll continue a process of producing. Yeah, I, for me, I had a, a similar moment because, you know, my 20s were trying a bunch of different creative endeavors. It was acting and modeling and hosting and music, but acting, like what you said, it was really interesting that it was most visible. And I was like, that's what I want. That's that's the thing that I want. And then when I started acting, and which I, I still say I'm, I'm better at acting than I am anything else. I believe um, it. But I, but I had a moment where I had this, my invention idea, this is where like my whole business uh, pivot happened. And I went all in on this, uh, literally all in, sold everything, went all in, put everything into a couch surf, lived out of my car for a year. And um, it, it was working on this, this cell phone stand that was going to revolutionize the way people shoot uh, content on Snapchat. And after the year, I always knew that there was one, one um, you know, it, it was a, there was a chance that Snapchat would change their functionality and that I and then my whole invention would fail. I yeah. knew that. And that did happen after a year. So I literally lost everything right when we were about to secure the funding to mass produce it. <laughs> and it was the best thing that happened to me yeah. because I don't like the idea was to to make this and then make a million dollars and then be able to then do whatever I wanted to. And I learned to have a love for business and I, and my business IQ went way up. But I had a moment where I was like, I don't want to do anything I don't want to do anymore. Yeah. And I don't want to be the greatest 
cell phone stand inventor. Mm. And then <laughs> that's when I was able to make that pivot. And then right. luckily I, at that point I was open. I had this new knowledge and I couldn't go back to my past life of just waiting tables and auditioning. And then someone asked me to run their Instagram. And I said, no, I'm going to go back. Actually, how much would you pay me <laughs> good, good question. if I, if I wouldn't have followed it up? Yeah. I, right. If I wasn't open to the moment, I wouldn't have started this thing. And I, st- he said $200 a week. And that turned into, you know, 800 to $1,000 a month, which then turned into another uh, restaurant client that he hooked me up with. Now I'm making more money than I was waiting tables, working for my phone. It could be anywhere in the world. And I started seeing this opportunity. And, and one of the things for me, um, I, I just read this book called Ikigai. It's a Japanese term to like, um, like your purpose in life. And, mm-hmm. and I had this, this, this moment where I, I was able to then create content, which I love doing. It's like producing on, on a, a lower level with a cell phone, but I love doing it. And I saw what I was, I was able to help people. And then I was able to build a business eventually around it. So now, you know, we have mastermind media and, um, but I'm, I'm very patient. So I know I will eventually act. I know that's uh, only a piece of the puzzle now. I do love creating businesses. I never would have known that if I wouldn't have jumped at that and seen what was out there. And then, and then the writing and, and um, you know, producing. So now I do have several things that I want to do that will, will happen in the next 10 to 20 years. But I, I, I love the now. I love doing this stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I, no matter what it is, as long as it, as long as it kind of feeds my purpose, doesn't matter how big or small. I feel like I'm as happy as I'll ever get. It'll, the s- more success will come. But isn't there there a, a terminal or a, um, a, a I don't know if it's a, a study that said after you make sixty five thousand dollars, the more money you make doesn't change your level of happiness. Yeah, they they say that there's a minimum level, and I don't know what it is. It probably changes from city to city based on the, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. standard of living. But whatever <laughs> that amount is, it's it's not that high. And then past that point, your uh, level of happiness is not increased by more money, yeah. meaning it's it's no longer correlated. Mm-hmm. Because money's not a real thing. Yeah. What it is is security. If you have yeah. enough security, yes. enough to live your life well. Every, not everyone wants to go to the most expensive restaurant, for yeah, instance. I so understand. You don't, so some people need money for that. Some people don't need money for that. So some you got to have rent. You got to be able to fix your car. That's right. You got to be able to put food on the table. You there's a, have, a minimum yeah. without even getting specific. Mm-hmm. There's a minimum level that we need. Yeah. And, and what, what you said feeds back to the thing of you're happy now at this moment, yeah. right? This moment, not Mark's happy mm-hmm. like all the time. No, that's nonsensical. You're happy at this moment. Yeah. For some reason, maybe this discussion made you happy because I said you were such a handsome guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe just a better word would be satisfied. Because, but, but no, no, happy is a good word. Okay. I like this. Because okay. are are you sad right now? This not moment? right now. Yeah, this. Moment. I was this morning, but not now. Uh, are you sad this moment? No. I know you were this moment, uh, this morning, and we all get sad. Yeah. You know, but at this moment, well, at this moment, I'm happy. I can't be more happy tomorrow. Because it's yeah. always now. Yeah. yeah. So if you're a, a basketball player and you say, like, boy, I love, I'm playing basketball, I'm getting paid, I'm happy. And then you win the championship. And then you say, I'm the, this is the happiest day of my life. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's an illusion. No, you're just happy again. Yeah. It's just that. Everyone's screaming and yelling, and there's more feelings from the excitement. Mm. I think it's interesting that most people, when they get into those super heightened states, say they can't remember anything about it. That's, Everybody says that when uh, they win the Academy Award, they don't remember anything. It's an adrenal. I call. I don't know if there's even a word. I call it adrenalized. An yeah. Adrenalized moment where you have adrenaline pumping in you. Mm-hmm. When when you're full of adrenaline, you, it's like a it's a drug. It is, yeah. It's like taking a shot of uh, what's that called? Where speed? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they, it, a shot of adrenaline, right? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Put, they yeah they give you adrenaline, yeah. nor epinephrine, or yeah, yeah. The mm-hmm. epinephrine, right? Yeah, take a shot of epinephrine. Ah, you know, <laughs> it's natural epinephrine, and uh, 
you also can't live in that state for too long. Oh no, you can't live at the top of a mountain. You yeah. literally, the, the the air is too thin. You can't, and you can't live happy all the time. That's not it. It's I know. Alan Watts, who's a favorite of mine, uh, a philosopher, writer, lecturer. Talk. You can't. It's not a healthy place to live. You have to live in a place of balance because you will get sad because of the pain of life. You will get sad and then you will get happy from the joys of life. So you to find a more balanced place now is a good goal. Yeah, and it's it's like and then with moments like this, I think once you're aligned with your purpose and you are putting that the work ethic in the in the right place for the right reasons you have moments like this where there's nowhere else i'd rather be because it's like the right place right time this is amazing i love and then how much how much this is going to impact other people's lives positively Mm -hmm. and knowing that we're doing some good in, in the world within that so you know if you can have moments where you feel like you're in the right place at the right time more often i think that makes your your life more happy as well yes why would i not want to be here at this moment an hour from now I mean, that's impossible to know. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You know what I was just thinking was, um, I think part of what, so what you just said about making people's lives better, I think because of my background and the way that I was brought up, so much of my um, upbringing was about always other people's lives. And so part of what I'm learning how to do is stop putting other people's lives ahead of my own all the time and just focusing on myself. I don't do it well right now, but it is, it's an interesting thing because I'm out of balance and that's where, that's where I think I got to start to fix my now. I I do so much work with actors, not just in acting, but in how to survive during the periods when you're unemployed, during the periods that you think, you know, you're going crazy and you're a failure and you're a loser because you're not working. And so much of that work, the f- one of the first things I'll always tell them, because I see they're spiraling down this terrible place and it's really horrible to watch because they're wonderful people, To they say it in the airlines when when the airplane is going down and the and the oxygen masks have fallen, you must put the oxygen mask on yourself first, not on your children. Yeah. Now, that goes against your your instinct because, oh, my baby, my baby, I got to put my oxygen mask in. And your baby's screaming and knocking the mask off, and then now you're all dead. I know. <laughs> you put it on your face first, then you deal with your children. That's what I keep telling them. You put it on now. <laughs> well, we'll add some effects and uh, put a mask on you and post. Uh, it, it's you know, it's such a silly thing they tell you on the air, you know, because but it's a profound philosophical <laughs> idea. I know. I'm putting my mask on. Yeah. I think we need to. I think we need to wrap up. I know. Yeah. So everyone, put your mask on now. <laughs> what does that mean? That's a metaphor. So put your, does that mean have a cup of tea right now? Take a bath, take a walk, make a phone call to someone you love, make a date with someone to have dinner, go shopping for a nice dress. What does that mean now? Meditate, exercise, there's a lot of things you can do that don't cost any money. Get out in the sun. Yeah. You know, the fact that you're listening to this now gives you an opportunity to continue making now better and now and now and now. And before you know it, that 10-year plan happens and occurs. And that's the purpose of these plans, to begin the process of now. Uh, I don't have anything more to say. I'm, I hope I didn't say too much. <laughs> no, you said, said a lot and actually ties back into what Kay started with. If you do all of those different things that you guys are speaking about, 
and you end up making a lot of money, you'll be mm -hmm. more likely to be a great person. <laughs> You're super rich. <laughs> yeah. that, that's right, because uh, you've always tried to make yourself uh, happy now. And, yeah. and then you're not this miserable human being with a billion dollars. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I know. Because there are those people. Yes. Absolutely. Money doesn't make you. Yeah. It only makes you more of what you already are. Yeah. So change what you are. Anyway, I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> My gas mask is on. We'll talk again. Please like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. That's how we grow. We'll see you all next time. Oh